as this rabbit hole continues to go deeper, because my digging, I dig deep down, deep, deep down the rabbit hole, guys. And the information that I'm about to share with you guys, get ready because it's about to get really real right now. Now, as you guys know, I did a video earlier on Whitney Houston, but I have more information and the rabbit hole just got deeper. Do you guys see this young lady right here? Her name is Stacy Francis. And see, on that night leading up to Whitney Houston's death, her and Stacy Francis got into a major altercation. Because Whitney Houston, it is alleged, and this is what Stacy stated, that Whitney Houston was afraid or had some kind of beef with her because she thought that Stacy was coming after her then boyfriend, Ray J. And so this happened two days before, guys. This altercation happened two days before Whitney Houston passed away. And this confrontation between Whitney and Francis, it is alleged that Whitney Houston confronted Francis and she had an interaction with this young lady. Now it was stated that Whitney Houston walked up to Stacy and muffed her on top of her head with her two fingers and then turned her head. Stacy went on to tell Whitney, Whitney, please don't do this. You're my idol. I worship you. Please do not put your hands on me. Now, y'all know how black women is. Girl, I don't care if you was Jesus Christ's wife. Any woman that walks up to you and begrades you and puts her hand on you in a public scene and tries to punk you, you are not going to say, girl, please don't do this. I'm your idol. So this is what Stacy alleged Whitney did to her. Muffed her and then turned her head away. And Stacy, you know just sat there and let her do it and said please nice and calmly don't do this Whitney bull shitty shit up Stacy Francis she was out of control and she put her hands in my face she was screaming at me and called me a bitch and she just went crazy like Jekyll and Hyde I turned and I looked at her and she pushed my forehead and turned my face away I grabbed her hand and I said, please don't do this. You are everything to me. You're my idol. You're a legend. I was crying and screaming out. We were both screaming until eventually we were pulled apart. Now I'm about to tear Stacy's ass apart because she's a freaking liar. See, she told the truth, but she mixed lies in with the truth. If you guys were paying attention to what her quote was, now she says that she grabbed Whitney's hand after Whitney pushed her forehead and turned her face away. I just told you guys, nobody's gonna sit there and let you do that to them. I don't care who you are. And at that point, particular point when it happened, I don't think she gave a fuck if it was Whitney Houston either because you put your hand in my face. We talked about this on a couple of videos. People don't like certain people putting, I don't like nobody putting their hand on my face, okay? So she put her hand on her forehead and on her face and she grabbed her hand right and then she continued to say that she was crying and screaming out yeah she probably was upset because she wanted to knock Whitney Houston's ass out because I knew I would have wanted to knock anybody out that did that to me and in public okay so she said that she was crying and screaming out and they both started screaming means and she said that Whitney got aggressive with her so there's no denying that Stacy got aggressive back with Whitney Houston because she went on saying that we both were screaming until we were eventually pulled apart so what do you mean pulled apart she made it seem like okay Whitney got aggressive that was aggressive to walk up to somebody and do that but she gave Whitney what Whitney gave her so now she's playing the victim like Whitney came up to her and punked her and then she just sat there and took the punking no she got back up with Whitney and that's why she claimed that they were both screaming until they were pulled apart now I doubt if this lady was actually crying she lied because baby if they were screaming 
I doubt if she was screaming, you're my idol. Please don't do this to me. And they were getting pulled apart and Whitney was cursing her ass out. No, Stacy called Whitney all kinds of bitches and hoes and everything that night. Please believe this, guys. Pay attention to the details. It makes sense. But this is what happened. Just two days before Whitney Houston came up dead, I knew it was some more shit to this. I knew it was some more players, and I knew that it was some more shit to this that led up to Whitney's death. I'm not saying that Stacy killed Whitney. Let's, however, continue to go down this rabbit hole, because if we look at everything that happened leading up to Whitney's death and her demise, untimely, then we can crack the code and see what we can pull out of the surface, up to the surface, out of the rabbit hole, up to surface, so everybody can see this, okay, for what it is. Have a look at this woman right here. Her name is Sarah Bayman. And see, recently in 2018, Sarah Bayman and Stacy were engaged to be married. So they're married as of 2020. Okay, just letting you guys know what that situation is right there, okay? Okay, so we all know Pat Houston is in collusion some kind of way. And, and what I've seen, and I have to keep this at a ledge, but what they showed Pat behind the scenes, she was talking a whole bunch of crap about Whitney. And, you know, they were saying that she's jealous of Whitney and her daughter's relationship. And, you know, there were a lot of things. So a lot of people that I feel had some kind of grudge against Whitney Houston. And that night, particularly, Ray J as well. Now you see this sister right here. Everybody knows who she is. Miss Pat Houston herself. This is Whitney Houston's sister-in-law. And she is married to Whitney Houston's brother. And everybody knows, allegedly, that Pat Houston had some kind of squabble or beef or jealousy towards Whitney Houston. And this lady was on the same floor with Whitney Houston's brother the night that Whitney Houston was in the hotel room. Just down the hallway, guys. And all of a sudden, it was really weird that Whitney had the corner room all of a sudden. They were stretched out that night. Now, what I'm doing, guys, is I'm giving you everything, okay? I'm giving you everything with no chaser. So I'm not accusing anybody. We just going to put everything out and bring everything up to the surface once again. Okay, so that's Stacy, Stacy's girlfriend, wife, and then we have the sister-in-law, Pat Houston. Now check this out, guys. So Whitney Houston made her sister-in-law, Pat Houston, her manager. And Pat claims that she's always been the apologist and she always had to apologize for everything. And she said that became very difficult for her. So during the sit down, Pat told Mr. McDonald that Whitney Houston was such a fantastic person. Now, when you're sitting down and you just start off by saying that you always had to apologize for everything. And then you go on to say that your sister-in-law was such a fantastic person. That is very telling, Pat Houston. However, let's continue, guys. And so she went on to speak about Whitney Houston's uh, Dionne Warwick's sister molesting Whitney as a child and that she it was extremely difficult because there are revelations in there. She stated that Whitney and Gary's mother didn't know about and that could have actually caused division in the family. And so Pat went on to say she wasn't quite comfortable with it. She was not comfortable about how Sissy or Dion acted like they really were not concerned about the situation. Pat went on to say that she had to think about Whitney and Gary and that her being with Gary for 26 years and married to him for 24, that she's seen such a great deal of pain coming from him. She stated that he had a lot of emotions and things he had to go through because of his addiction. And she think that the, mol the molestation that happened caused him to get into this addiction that him and his sister Whitney were battling at the time. And she said, you know, sometimes you just got to stand by your man. You stand by your husband. And she said that's what she did. She said the whole time she thought about him and Whitney. Oh, Pat, you just make it sound so believable, girl. You was not standing by them. You were standing by that bread, honey. Waiting for your slice. Allegedly. So she went on to state that it disturbed her that the fact that Dee Dee's name was ever mentioned. Could it be that she knew more? She said she didn't have any issue with speaking about what happened to Whitney and her husband by Dee Dee's hands. But that did need to be addressed. 
Then she stated she was very apprehensive about her name being put out there because she has a sister. And Dion certainly is not responsible for anyone else's actions. Okay, because she has a sister and because Dion Warwick is her sister, so don't speak about it. But if you guys just, I love how people put lies in and mix it with the truth. You just stated that you stood by your husband, stand by your man. Well, if you were standing by your man, it does not matter. He accused someone of molesting him as a child. It doesn't matter who it was, honey. See, Pat comes off to me as a scale flipper. She skips, just, just flips the scale. She'll say one thing and say something else. I'm starting to believe that she's battling addiction herself, allegedly. Because, however, she goes on to state that she goes back into the scale of things and nothing is as significant as Whitney being gone. She's not here. She died at 48 years old, and then her daughter died at 22. And then Pet said, you know, over the years, Whitney failed her daughter, and she was bringing her on to this exhausting world and taking her on tours. And she had her surrounded by adults that were dysfunctional, and they were addicts, and then she should have been in school. But you just said she was an absolutely amazing person. So she's mixing the lie with the truth. I'm not saying that she should just go ahead and bash Whitney, but let's just keep it on one accord. And as we can see, Pat Houston is in the family, so she's dysfunctional as well because birds of a feather flock together. They should have had her publicist to speak for her instead of her speaking because she needs some kind of therapy or maybe a sit down with the detectives to tell them what actually took place on that floor that night who was in Whitney's hotel room and what happened because there are a host of suspects okay so she said that there was a cautionary tale that you have to watch what you do in front of your children you have to not just talk to them you have to teach them so is she saying that Whitney didn't teach Bobby Christina anything then she went on to say it's not enough to just have children see she's speaking directly to Whitney and at this moment, she's disregarding Whitney Houston's legacy. Now, it's good to tell the truth, but don't spot tell the truth. Tell the whole truth, so help you God. So she's giving me blurred lines. Then this chick went on to say that Whitney's death was not entirely unexpected. Then ends it with, oh, considering her drug use. And the baby is another thing. In which she was referring to Bobby Christina. And that Bobby Christina, she was just only 22 years old when she passed away. And she said that wasn't unexpected, not at all either. Pat Houston, you left out one other person. Gary, your husband. He faced the same addiction as Bobby Christina and Whitney Houston as well. So let's hop back on over to Gay J. So it seems that night that Ray J had a little altercation with Whitney Houston as well because he stated to Whitney... That Whitney was wrong for putting her hands on Stacy and approaching her the way that she did and being very disrespectful towards her. And however, I'm not agreeing or disagreeing that Ray J was correct or incorrect about that situation and what he said. I'll let you guys be the judge of that one. Because in my opinion, I believe that this incident was intentionally provoked. And it wasn't provoked by Whitney or Stacy. And as you guys know the saying that a hit dog will holler. Because from in 2012 when Whitney Houston died up until 2017, all of a sudden Ray J and Mrs. Stacy had a sit down. And Ray J told Stacy it was all his fault that she fought with Whitney Houston two days before her death. So Ray J and Stacy tried to have a heart to heart and shit got complicated real quick. So if you guys can remember that very epic song that Kelly Price and Whitney Houston were singing up on the stage, honey, that's when everything kicked off right after that. Whitney Houston had been drinking tequila. She was feeling herself and she was up there singing. She turned around and stepped off the stage. Before she finished her last note, she eyed over into the corner and that's when she saw Ray J and Miss Stacy in the corner having a conversation. They didn't say if they were hugged up, but they were in the corner having a very deep conversation about something. And so that's when Winnie ran over there and muffed her and did all that shit to her. And that's when they got into it. Okay. And so now this is what Whitney was saying to to Stacy. 
itch this my man i'm his cougar i'm a cougar get away from my man itch this my man and so that's when you know they said that whitney put her hand on her forehead but see now they're telling the real part because after whitney put her hand on her forehead stacy is a liar stacy says she grabbed whitney's hand no stacy stacy then pushed whitney houston back in retaliation for touching her face See, I told y'all this Miss Stacy is a liar, girl. What you got to lie for? The, the lady is dead. She can't tell her side, so why you going to try to create a side, okay? And so now they saying that at the time, at that time, guys, Ray J denied being back with Whitney. Wait a minute. So they were in a relationship, and at that time, they were not together? And so now they're saying, you know, once Stacy pushed Whitney back, Ray J jumped in to try to defuse the situation. Baby, this is all becoming so clear. We're going to break this shit down because guess what? Ray J was not with Whitney Houston, but he just all of a sudden showed up there in front of her, sitting down with Stacy in a corner. See, in my opinion, guys, Ray J set this shit up. Ray J tried to make Whitney jealous and he succeeded. He succeeded. He knew what was going to happen because they were sitting right in front of the stage that Whitney was able to look over and see him and her. So if he's not with you anymore, Whitney, how is he still your man? Right? They were not together at the time. This is what they're saying. So Whitney was later spotted leaving the club with blood running down her leg. So how did Whitney start bleeding if she just pushed her? And then Ray J jumped in. So did Ray J snatch Whitney up and start scratching her in the club on her legs? Okay, guys, we going to come back with part three. I'm going to make y'all wait. Yep, I'm going to make y'all wait for this hot tea. Until the next video, guys, and thanks for watching, okay?